what we're going to do is we're going to show you how to find out if your spindle is, well, let's just say bad, warped, or whatever. Notice I've disconnected my belt off of there, so we'll just put it off the side right there. Get you like a, I think what we've got right here is a one inch. And if you can, get on top of your spindle. And I want you to watch this. Well, after I release it, I want you to watch both of them. I want you to see this. I'm going to explain something in a minute. See how bad that thing is out of round? Now, here's the funny part. I ain't hit nothing at all. There is no damage to the blades. There's no damage to the head. The blades are actually the second blades that have been on here. The first blades, of course, in time. These are going to be replaced too. Now I get to replace this spindle and its twin on the other side. The problem what I was noticing was when I was mowing is, hear that? Out of chatter, chatter kind of out of vibration. Well, sure enough, there you go. And that's the reason why. It's warped up here. Now, this is a factory belt. No belt change, nothing out of the ordinary. But you can see how oblong that is. That's not good. That'll wear the bear, I, you know, we know that it's gonna wear the spindle, the bearing, and all that out. So when you come across this, either you can do two things. You can either tear this down all the way, and what I mean is the spindle house, and uh, keep your fingers crossed that you get the shaft and everything out in one piece, or you just get a new spindle and go with it that way. Personally, in the past, um, when it comes to tearing spindles apart, it's a lot better just to go ahead and get you a new spindle and throw it in there and call it good. Um, normally, your spindles will come with a new pulley wheel and, of course, everything you need right here. I'm going to show you the video of replacing it and everything, but I thought right now show you the reason why I'm replacing it. And the reason why is that spindle and that weird blah, 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 blah. The other one is just as bad, and that is the one that's on the shoot side. This is on the inside, you know, because there's no shoot over here. And I can't understand why the belt's not super tight. It's not pulling. The only thing is, is I can think of is maybe they were bad from factory to begin with. I've had bad spindles be shipped to me before, but, you know, there's no... You can hear it. That's the bearing at the bottom. So pretty much the bearing at the bottom is getting worn out. Same situation up there. And I get a little bit of upward play. You get that. That's normal. But that right there, that's bad. So what I'm going to do is in the next couple days I get my new one. And this is my normal winter PM that I do on my zero turn, my tank. And... Uh, I'll go ahead and show you how to replace it and everything. It's not bad. It's pretty easy. But this is what I wanted to show you to test your thing. Because a lot of people will, well, I don't hear any grinding. Well, yeah. But just because you don't hear any grinding doesn't mean that the bearings ain't shot. It could be out of round. could be wobbled in there. Your shaft could be twisted. The attach bracket at the bottom could be warped. There's quite a few other things. You could have the blades actually misaligned if you put the wrong size or wrong style of blades on, um, depending on the holes and yada yada and all that. I'm not going to get into that, but I'm going to just basically show you the, what to look for if you think that you're uh, when you're mowing and you hear or you get weird vibrations. Not all the time is it a bad blade. It could be a bad pulley setup. All right. Guess what came in today? I <laughs> know, it's surprising. Okay, we got out the crappy spindle. Got both of them out. Anyways, what we're going to talk about real quick. I'm not going to go and bore the hell out of everybody. New spindle, old spindle. Made by Stearns, made by Cub Cadet. 
possibly made by Stearns for Cub Cadet. Anyways, came in as a whole assembly, replacement assembly, or I mean, this is what it's replacing. All right, this one feels a little bit heavier, but anyways, who cares? What I want to talk to you about is the reason why you want these kind. If you'll notice, right here, there's a little grease fitting. Let me put this thing down. Anyways, most of your factory ones that you get from your uh, MTDs, John Deere's, Aries, Huskies, most of them do not have the nice little zert fitting. This is the one reason why I like these. A lot of people will be like, oh, the Stearns, you know, they, they make good stuff, but sometimes they break down. Well, hell, everything breaks down. But the one thing is, is, at least right here, I can keep shoving grease in it. And when I do my normal PMIs, my preventative maintenance for the every year that I do, because every year my lawnmower comes in, because it ain't going to be mowing for four to five months, I tear them down, go back through, get them ready for next season. That's how I found out the spindles were basically bad, and same with the blades. Um... Later on, we'll talk about the blades. But anyways, what I wanted to talk about this right now is this is the new spindle. And when you get a new spindle, the biggest thing you need to make sure is comparison of height from basically the bottom to the top. You want to make sure that your pulleys are even across where your base is. So your base on both of them are even across. You want to make sure that you have whatever style for your blade adapter or attachment is here. Like I have the star, so it's exactly a dead ringer to the other one. The thing is, is behind this, um, before you install it, what I like to do is re-grease these until I see the grease start squirting out a little bit of spots. The second thing I do is I make sure that I put some kind of anti-corrosion uh, stuff on here and on the nut. Um, some people will end up wanting to put Loctite. Hey, it's your call. You do it your way. Personally, I don't because I want to be able to yank that spindle back out. And we all know that this is aluminum. The bolts are steel, two dissimilar metals. After a while, the aluminum will corrode around the bolt and then it's going to have a hell of a time getting that bolt out of there. If you tighten it securely and tight enough, the bolt usually will come out with no problem. Um, if not, get you some PB Blaster, Mouse Milk, Crow Oil, spray it on the top where the bolt will penetrate up through here. And then just go ahead and set and wait for about 30 to 40 minutes. Um, you can put a little heat on these, heat them up a little bit, and they'll stretch and expand. Like I said, it's just little tips and things I've done in the past to get it. But all I wanted to just really go over real quickly was when you get these, double make sure that its measurement is perfect don't put something in that might be a quarter a half do not because one you're going to shred your belt you're going to put undue power um tearing up everything so then when this starts spinning it ain't going to spin perfect and right it's going to actually have a tendency of warping because if it's at an angle what it's going to do is after a time it'll start wearing here or wearing up here and then it's just going to make this thing break off. If you keep it even, it's going to be uniform wear. You won't have any problems. So anyways, like I said, this is the new one that's going in my beast. I showed you the difference basically between the new one and the old one. The new one has got the nice little zerk fitting sitting right here. Um, other than that, there really isn't anything else. I'm going to go ahead and install these. And uh, probably in about six months, I'm going to do... Probably about August, maybe, maybe July. Depends when the blades need to be resharpened. But um, in the kit that I got, these are the blades that came. These are factory Cub Cadet blades. Okay, see? This was came in the kit. Part number cross references over to replacement. The thing is, is what you're going to notice, like on this one, these are sunk down a little bit. You'll notice that there's a lip right here okay but they the blades slope down a little bit and you take this the the hump is down on these the hump is up just make sure that you got the proper clearance but if you set them apart 
um, just do a comparison and everything, they're almost exactly the same. Length, they're the same. Width, they're actually, I mean, well, you can tell. <laughs> Big difference because, well, it's been wearing out. But the thing is, is the other thing I want to talk about, difference. This is heavier. This one seems a lot lighter. I know because pieces are missing. But I've also realized that when I use, um, this is the Copperhead brand. I've used Copperhead before. I had no problems with it. It's just basically stamped steel and then they go in and just kind of grind out what they want to put on there and then they paint it and send it out to you. The thing is, these are heavier. You want a heavy one. And the reason why is, if you're mowing and you hit rocks and stuff, these can take a little bit of beating. If you end up hitting, let's say you've got a little limb or something sticking up, these can take the beating versus these. You'll notice there's a difference also in the thickness. It's a little bit thicker than this. That's one reason why it's heavier. But the thing is, is what you got to really pay attention to is when you're mowing, and this is really serious, before every mow, come down and check your angle. Make sure you don't have any major nicks. And remember one thing, as everybody's got their own preference, so I'm not, you know, before somebody goes off on deep end about my video, I could care less. But anyways, if you notice, you've already got the, the uh, cutout. Okay, the angle of the blade. When I resharpen blades for people, I make sure that I I usually go to the bend and then I go up here. And I usually will only go no more or no less than an inch. I try to keep it as close up here as I can. And the reason why is because after a while, you mowing, your blade is gonna start losing more of the meat out on this corner. Well, then when you're mowing, and you've got that divot set in here and you hit this, let's say you hit a nice little rock, nice pretty quartz. You hit it, it'll break that off. Shoot it out a lawnmower and hit something. Thank to God it ain't anybody valuable or any kids or anything that'd be out playing in the yard. And the reason why I've seen it happen, even on my own stuff. That's why I get kind of anal retentive when it comes to the blades. If I bring, have friends of mine, they'll give me, hey, sharpen my blades. I'll go through, yeah. If it meets it, I'm gonna sharpen them back up. Put it on the, my little uh, leveler. Make sure that they're level. Send them on their way. But if not, I'm gonna, nope. And then I'll turn around and throw these in the scrap bin and give them somebody who can turn it in for scrap metal, I don't care. But anyways, that's the biggest thing. Is Also, on your back curve piece here, if you start mowing and you start noticing that it's a lot thinner up here, which it's going to be because if you're in sandy conditions like we are, uh, this the sand is hellacious on these. But what's going to happen is this will start disappearing. That is part of the stiffening process and keeps this strong. So you want to do what you can. Um, every time that I usually take these off, what I nine times out of ten will do, I will grab engine paint because it's a little bit harder. And I'll heat these up, you know, I'll heat them up a couple hundred degrees and then I will spray them and then let it bake on there. And once it bakes on there, it's good. It'll last a little bit longer. And you use that for like when you're wanting to stretch out blades a little bit longer for the season. Let's say you got a month left. You don't feel like buying $40 or $50 or $60 or even $130 for blades. You want to just stretch it out enough so that the winter you can do it then. So what I normally will do is right through here, clean these up when I'm done sharpening the blades up. I'll go through and, and mic them and make sure they're okay. And if they're okay, then what I do is I put usually a couple, three or four of the coats of the engine block paint. And it doesn't matter what color you use. Nobody's really going to be looking. And if they do, they got to find a hobby. Um, and then what I do is I'll first coat it, heat it lightly not burn it just lightly keep it so it kind of hardens up on there spray the other one usually do about three coats same when I sharpen the blades some people do it some people like I said this is just me I usually will go ahead and I will sharpen up here when I'm done filing and everything I know I'm good I will go ahead and repaint this so it lasts a little bit longer now granted in sandy conditions within probably a good hour or so, two, three hours of mowing. It might be gone, but at least it was there to help. Um, 
And then if so, you can just wheel it around, put it back on there. But anyways, I hope some of this stuff helps y'all. So in future things, if you decide to go ahead and work on your lawnmowers and stuff and do blades, spindles, and all your preventative maintenance, don't be afraid. You can do this. This is easy. Just going to take some tools, take a trip to Lowe's, Home Depot, some nice stores. Maybe get a Home Depot or Lowe's card. Sure in the hell can't get a Sears card. <gasps> anyways, anyways, this is Travis. I just thought I'd tell y'all a little bit about the spindle, the switch out that I'm going to be doing on my Cub Cadet Zero Turn. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask. All right, remember what we did before I took these off? This is a brand new one. And you'll see if you notice any weird wobble. I always want to do You notice it's got a little bit. That's the factory because that's the pulley that's actually doing it. But if you, your biggest thing is you look at the shaft. As long as the shaft is straight, that's what your biggest concern is. It's not so much the pulley, but it's that right there. And then what I did is I filled it with mobile gear grease, what I normally use. So. When you go in the service these, well, you can see, well, you can't. But anyways, I use mobile grease. It works perfect. It's a high temp. It's water resistant. It works really good. Never have any problems. But I mean, even though you can see how good it spins. But I wanted to just show you that. Just do the test. You'll be good. All right. Check you later. Okay, one more important thing. After you get your stuff all installed, you really need to do this. If you notice, I've put a mark right there on all four bolts. That lets me know if the bolts are loosening up. So like throughout when I'm running throughout the season, if I want to double make sure that my bolts, it's just a quick way instead of having to go around a wrench, I can look from the top and see if there's a change in the angle. And then if you have to change, you know, let's say you have to loosen or tighten, you just remark it and call it good. But that is one great thing that you could do to keep your uh, wits about you to let you know if there is a bolt loosening up. Okay.